ethical leader um, on a presentation about values in a crisis with guest appearances from Kieran Sati and Buki Youssef. Whenever I think and talk about values, I always reference back to the metaphor of our values being our compass. They are our North Star. They help us guide ourselves on journeys and make sure we are heading in the direction and the destiny that we have. I also believe that our anchors ground us, they anchor us. Whether you think of um, your values being your roots as a tree or our, our anchors in the sea, I really think they help us bring that stability and security and safety, particularly when the waters get a bit stormy, as they are now. Staying with the nautical theme for a little bit longer, I can remember when I first met Jill Berry and listening to her speak at a, an event about leadership and she quoted somebody who had made this reference about the fact that um, ships aren't built to stay in the harbour, um, they're built to sail and I, and I really think that's true of our values. We might believe we have strong values and our core values are very present in our day-to-day -day existences. But until they're challenged, we don't really know how strong they are. So when we find ourselves as the eye of a storm, as I did a couple of years ago, um, that is when our values are really tested. Um, and it was a, a really interesting experience for myself and our team to go on when we had the BBC camp outside school um, and we were in all the national tabloids because we believe passionately in our school about diversity. We had a diverse um, menu and, and food service and it affronted a couple of our um, more extreme parents, shall we say, um, and they challenged what we were doing, um, didn't get the answer they wanted, so we got dragged through the tabloids. I think they thought they were going to break us, I think they thought they were going to break me. Um, the irony was it actually made us stronger, it made our values even more powerful within the community. So reflecting on how all the haters came out of the tabloids, I had so many horrific comments about me on Facebook. Um, I had 80 hand penned letters calling me everything under the sun from random people as far away as Doncaster. Um, I wrote a blog. I was, I was advised just to leave it and let it be. And I was like, no, I'm not going to let it be. Um, so I sat down and got all my thoughts and feelings out in a blog. And I wrote a blog called The Trolls Under the Bridge, um, Leadership Resilience, and how our values are actually our source of strength when we hit those troubled waters. The, the blog went viral. I think it had 14,000 hits. Um, my blogs normally get about 40 hits um, and it ended up being nominated for the Schools Week Blog of the Year um, by the reviewers that year. So there's just some links on here um, if you're interested in reading the original blog or you're interested in reading the review of the blog by Jill Berry herself. Um, so then fast forward a few years, we now find ourselves in a pandemic where, again, I believe our values are what are going to really hold us together as individuals, as communities and keep us strong during this bizarre time. Um, so doing vlogs regularly, I was then asked to write a piece in Schools Week um, recently. So you can see a piece there called Now More Than Ever, What We Need in Our Schools, Our Values. So if we think about tests that are thrown at us in our personal professional lives, I definitely think the coronavirus is a test that has been thrown at the world, thrown at humans, just to see how we respond. Um, and is it a test that's going to break us or is it a test that's going to become a lesson that we can learn from? So when the pandemic first kind of hit and we were talking about going into lockdown and since we've been in lockdown, um, I've really been thinking about like what are the values we are drawing on right now? What are the values that we've needed to nurture because perhaps they're values we don't use so often? Um, so which values have served us and been a resource during, during the pandemic? I've also reflected a lot on what are the leadership values that we need to see um, and which leaders are modelling and emulating and embodying those values. Um, and I'm just absolutely in love with this woman. Um, I don't get very many um, professional crushes, but if I could vote for someone to be our world leader, it would be Jacinda Ardern. I just think she is everything that we need um, in a country leader, in a world leader. Um, and I, I just think that she is leading the way and showing how to be a humane, humane values-led leader. So as I, as I said um, earlier on, I definitely think that this is a lesson for us. Um, when your values are strong and when your values reference and frame um, all decision-making decision choices, behaviours and actions, 
I actually think it's easier to make those decisions um, and know what the right thing to do is because that strong sense of core values actually are what um, guides us and pushes us in the right direction. I also think that our values can become our, our not only our source of strength but also our protective shield. Um, I definitely felt empowered um, by my values when I was having all that negativity a couple of years back. Um, I really felt like actually now I know who I am as a person, as a as a leader. I know who our school and our team is. Um, and when I had Year Sevens walking into the school gate saying to me. Mr. Wilson, they're not modelling the value of kindness, are they, in the press? Um, it just made me sort of like smile, actually, that if, if 12 year olds, 11 year olds can talk about values and know what's right from wrong, then there's no excuse for adults not doing the same. So this takes me to why I set up the daily writing challenge um, as we went into lockdown. Um, leaving, leaving school leadership, leaving being a teacher after 18 years was quite destabilising for me. Um, I've been working in a university since um, September, so for the last seven months I've been transitioning out of quite an institutionalised approach to my day-to-day -day existence. Um, and, and it's been quite odd just sitting and watching everything that's going on in the education system, in schools, speaking to lots of friends and colleagues, um, people who I, I love dearly, being extremely anxious and stressed about everything that's been thrown at them within the schools. And I've definitely felt a, a massive sense of guilt. Like I, I, I'm trained to be there on the front line and I'm not. I'm not doing what I'm trained to do. I'm not serving um, others, which is what I'm used to doing. So I wrapped my brain around, what, what, what could I do? What, what things could I offer from home, um, from outside of a school building to support others? And I came up with two ideas. One was to launch a series of peer support circles. So I've got 30 women who I meet um, six times a week um, in six small groups to do peer support coaching. And then I thought, actually, what helps me get through crises is to write and to reflect and to blog. So I just put out a tweet saying, I'm going to start a daily writing challenge. Um, I'm going to put a value out each day. Who would like to join us? And as with many things, it's just been a bit of a tidal wave. Um, so it's been very exciting to connect with 70 plus writers who now follow the blogs and contribute and read and comment each day. So here are the 30 themes, values-based themes, um, that I've put out for the first um, 30 days. Um, and I forgot to mention the kind of the rainbows of hope, that's why I've done the colour scheme here. I really think that each of these blogs has been just a little bit of sunshine, a rainbow of hope um, in quite a bleak few weeks. Um, so they're not all values, but they're all values-based themes. And you can click on um, any of the hyperlinks on the VBE website and it will give you the whole collection of blogs there to have a little read through. So I'm now going to hand over to two of our daily writing challenge bloggers, my dear friends, Kieran Sati and Buki Youssef, who I met through Twitter and Woman Ed many, many years ago now. Over to you girls. Kindness, a simple word, but it's power. I say quiet power is unlimited. I'm going to start with the story of the old man um, because it sort of weaves into what I'd written for the daily writing challenge for the kindness blog. Um, so the old man, he's homeless in this story and throughout the story you follow his journey from the soup kitchen to the bus to the bench and then the story stops. Um, quiet footsteps, and this is how I would imagine the story if it was a moving scene. Um, quiet footsteps are approaching the old man where he sits um, and then they stop and then a little girl offers him a sandwich. And it's the best tasting sandwich he's ever had. And I think we can all infer why it would be the best sandwich he's ever had. Um, but the power of this story is about how noticing is a small but powerful type of kindness. And I love this story and I love reading it to the children in my class as well, because they, they always get it. Um, and when I'd written my blog for the Daily Writing Challenge, I'd written about an old man too. So there's an old man that I'd normally see every day um, on my journey to work. Around about 6.15 in the morning, I'd see him sort of walk down the road. Um, and then once the coronavirus had started, I hadn't seen him in a while. It was probably a week and I thought, oh, goodness, OK, hope he's OK. And then I made a wish, which sounds a bit bizarre because I didn't know the old man. Um, but I made a wish hoping that he would stay safe and he's well. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, as I'm journeying to, well, not to work, but to the hub school, Oh my goodness, I see the old man and I think it was a case of, he doesn't know who I am, but it's it's a case of noticing, isn't it? So 
coming back to the blog, um, that was my theme within the theme, noticing. of noticing I think it's it's quiet and it's very subtle um, and sometimes I think it's forgotten as well at the moment I think we'd all agree there's a stillness and um, this space and hopefully I'm hoping this sanctuary for a lot of us as well whilst this I want to say rejuvenation or healing of the earth is happening um, but noticing it should feel louder because we've got the space and the time to be able to do it rather than have all the busyness around us um, so part of what I'd written for the blog, I'm just going to read out to you because I think it, it sort of summarises the point of the theme. Um, kindness has taken the form of just noticing this week. So when I'd written it, there was just lots of little things that were happening around school um, with staff and with children. And it's, it's like, I don't know, it's almost like you're filling up your cup, aren't you, in some ways with it when you notice it because it makes you feel better about everything else that's happening. Um, so noticing and acknowledging kindness, noticing absence, hoping for their presence, noticing the little things. Um, and I think it is the little things, noticing is a little thing, but when you put all of those small kindnesses together, it makes a difference. Um, and I think I've always been a bit worried about the selfishness that a lot of humans can display. Um, and sometimes there's that realization, it's probably easier to be selfish than selfless. And selflessness does seem to be rare when I'd written this, but I have to say, I don't know, since all of this is happening, for me, kindness is definitely palpable and it isn't necessarily a rare or exceptional thing anymore. And it shouldn't be, and it never should have been that anyway. And I think if we keep practicing small kindnesses, hopefully the world will be, it's going to be different anyway, but hopefully a lot more kinder as well. Okay, so um, coming back to the idea of values i think kindness has always been a value of mine and i hope it's something that i'd always you'd always see in me if you were to meet me or to know me um i'm just going to finish off with what i'd written because i think it sort of sums up the reasoning behind the theme and it being the first one small kindnesses magnify what it means to be human and noticing kindness and noticing each other magnifies the worth and the value of each life we are all worthy of kindness, but we should also bestow that knowing everyone is worthy of kindness. And life is short, which I think this virus is teaching us um, a little too harshly at times, maybe. Um, but it's a case of don't let kindness pass you by, the gift and the capacity for kindness. And noticing, I think, might be one of those underrated facets of kindness. But I just hope after this, we all notice a lot more um, and we can appreciate a lot more and therefore be kind and kinder to each other. Um, over to you, Bucky. One of the blogs that I have written as part of the daily writing challenge was on the theme of family. I frequently mention my collective nearest and dearest. However, what made this particular blog different is the mention of educators that I refer to as my Twitter family and the impact of their actions upon me. I know how strange it must sound to talk of meaningful connection through social media. However, this is what I have repeatedly experienced. When I first joined Twitter in November 2013, I didn't have a clue what I was doing and it felt as though I was just talking to myself because many of my tweets and my queries went unanswered. It all changed six months later when I responded to someone's tweeted request about help with some science revision materials. Once I learned how it worked and how it actually resonated with the way in which I operate, I was hooked and I got engaged with so many different projects and initiatives like Teacher Five a Day, BAMED, Women Ed, etc. as the years went on. When I think back over the years, I will admit to how astounded I am at how much my professional and personal life has changed through my experiences with Twitter.
Engaging with educators on Twitter has been the most transformative professional development experience I have ever encountered. And beyond that, I have met individuals, met in a virtual sense and also in real life later on, who have supported me and aided my well-being. This definition of family is one that I deliberately shared because of the fact that it refers to people who are related by birth or affinity and how the purpose of families is to maintain the well-being of its members. And this is something that I have definitely experienced and have also tried to give back to. My Twitter family know who they are and over the years they have helped me to maintain my well-being in a variety of ways which includes 6pm phone calls Monday to Friday as a reminder for me to go home, photos of nature being generously shared on my timeline, my involvement with Teacher 5 a day which has encouraged me to connect, exercise, learn, notice and volunteer unexpected gifts in the post, including Ramadan advent calendars full of well-received chocolate pieces and chemistry textbooks that were sent to me as part of a Twitter request. Their heartfelt, random and spontaneous acts of kindness, support and generosity has helped to make Twitter a platform where I can draw my strength, feel home, and be authentic, particularly during this pandemic lockdown, where it's not always possible to spend time with anyone that's not living within our homes. It's one of the reasons why I hope that educators who are new to Twitter can also find others that they can refer to as their Twitter family. As I said, it's a transformative experience. So thank you, really, thank you very much for um, listening to our presentation. Thank you to Kieran and Buki for contributing. Thank you to everybody who has been um, writing for the Daily Writing Challenge and also supporting, retweeting, commenting. Um, one massive thank you goes out to the lovely Sue Webb. She's one, one of my friends from VBE, Value Space Education. Um, Dr. Neil Hawkes, the, one of the founders, is there in the photo too. Sue has done an amazing job um, of collating all of the blogs and referencing them all on the VBE website. So if you go onto their website, look at the Daily Writing Challenge, you can see I think there's now like 250 blogs there. Take care, be safe, stay well. <laughs>